I really guess, Ted, if you were asking me today what components, what products Genesis A has in their arsenal today to go out and make an impact on a guy's farm, of course it'd be Invigorate, it'd be the, the big one to start with if it were, were me. That's always kind of been our go-to product because we can go out and see results pretty quickly. Really just uh, sometimes a, a few days after planting. Oh, so the guy doesn't have to wait till the end of the year to know that something happened. Yeah, and, and I like going back to his farm, especially if he split the planter and walking out there with him and looking at the difference, sometimes measuring the difference with stand counts it's, and those type things. Even the, the amount of uh, growth in the seedling itself, whether it be root or shoot, mm -hmm. seeing that in, in the field. So I'm, I'm, that's typically the product I really enjoy going out and looking at first. The other, some of the other technologies we have that um, I know we're finding out, and a lot of them are products that guys would not typically be using at that time, and that would be the, the micro boom. Uh, we've shown that on several farms, and I really think that critical time is 250 to 350 GDUs to get out there with it. If we go any later than that, we see our, our returns diminish on that. Vita and Terra is just a product that continually just works anywhere we put it. Uh, foliar, uh, seeing a really good response and putting it out foliarly. Uh, I don't know what's in it, I can't tell you, but I know that plant responds to it and enjoys it. Carbo needs to be in probably every, every tank full of spray that goes, goes across your farm and at least two ounces. Seems to really give positive results. So, if you're asking me what I'm excited about today, those would probably be the ones. Bricks levels. What do you think about that? Well, all my life, Ted, I've, I've heard about bricks because I went to some of the uh, grassroots, uh, I guess, acres conferences uh, back in, you know, 20 years ago. Right. 30, well, even 30-some years ago. Right. And they talked about bricks, they talked about elevating that, and they talked about some of the treatments. You could go out and split a pasture and put on the, the grass, and the cows would graze that down uh, and leave the other alone sometimes because the animal could actually taste better, yeah, yeah. Taste better since the higher sugar level. Um, and the old uh, story has always been if we increase the bricks level, the, when the insect bites into it, it cannot metabolize the sugar, and mm -hmm. so it, 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 it doesn't like it, and sometimes it, it actually uh, upsets their stomach, so to speak, so they don't go back to that. Do I believe in that? Yes, I do. Do I believe in when you go to the grocery store that you can determine better quality produce with bricks level? Does it last longer on the uh, shelf most definitely I mean all that's been proven as far as in a, uh, a row crop uh, I feel like if we've got higher bricks in that plant we're getting better uh, root exudates uh, you're getting more photosynthesis in that plant and that plant is metabolizing better whether that be uh, you know phosphorus or calcium or potassium or whatever it, it might be I think as you send that sugar out through the roots that it's it's helping your, your microbial activity and really they're the ones that work as little miners and and the guys in the, doing the excavating of the nutrients uh, in the soil profile around the roots. So if, if you see a plant that's got um, a higher bricks you're just going to assume it's going to be easier or it's going to be easier for it to fight disease. Do you kind of assume a higher you? It just depends. Well, I think it. I think it depends. Now, I, I know we've done it in grapes uh, in Georgia, muscadine grapes, where we've increased the bricks, we've increased the the yield on that crop. It was pretty substantial. Um, the The consumer really enjoyed it because the, the right. you know the grape was uh, the muscadine grape was sweeter. Uh, I guess when we look at it in row crops, as far as if we were looking at a grass crop like corn. If we raise that bricks level, is that going to increase our test weight? I've not done any studies like that, but it really seems to to just uh, would be something to me would be commonplace if that if that bricks levels up, that plant's going to 
to be hitting more on what I say all cylinders is going to Right, it tends there. to correlate with nutrient right. density, so maybe the nutrient density brings the, the, the test weights up. Right. If not more grain. Well, here's, here's the thing that we found out in the crops that I worked with by using your refractometer. Mm -hmm. You know immediately, when I say immediately, within 30 minutes, just like you stated, within 30 minutes, if, uh, and I know some of the gurus that have went out with like three different spray bottles and sprayed a section of the plant and sprayed this formula here, to, and, they, and they, they test before they apply, and then they go out and they may have these little three mixtures and you know just like a spray bottle spray those out there and then they'll test the the bricks and they'll see how that plant's responding well that would be the formula that they would go out with no yeah there's a lot of guys that say that that's what you should do yeah. is let the plant tell you what it's wanting and then before you go crazy and what we do though is we tend to okay this is your this is our formula so to speak mm -hmm. that we go out at certain stages of the crop and we do this you know, we've done that because that's really what the industry's all is has been accustomed to. Do we become a really good crop consultant on our own farm and get our own refractometer and say, I'm gonna go out there and I'm gonna look at these components and we we do it maybe in one afternoon to know what we need to get geared up for the next day. And that's the formula we go in and we put together is some people say a cocktail in the, the the shop that evening or that next morning before you go spray? That would be ideal, but I don't know how quick that's going to be accepted in the industry overall. But it would be really ideal. A refractometer is, uh, I mean, a digital one, and really, if you're looking at if you're farming five hundred thousand acres, it's not that large of an investment. No, one hundred fifty bucks maybe. So. You can get one and um, get you a little garlic press or something and press sap out of the leaf and you kind of know where you are. So you think there's, uh, it's kind of, I, I, I'm a little bit hesitant to tell guys to start messing around with them because it can get thrown off like if things are grouted out and you're not doing like a side by side or if. I think Hugh brings it up, if it's short boron, it'll hold its sugars up at night and you'll go out in the morning when things haven't been photosynthesizing, you'd be like, oh, my bricks are high, I'm good to go. So there's ways that you can get like sort of thrown off the scent. So sometimes I'm reluctant to tell a guy like, here, here's your silver bullet. Because guys won't take the time to understand all those vagaries of it. So do you think it's ever going to get to the point where guys could do it for corn? Or, or well, bacon? Ted, here's the thing. It, it, it's a tool. Yeah. And a tool's only good as the person who's holding the handle, I will say that, right. of any tool, whether that be a laptop or whether that be your your um, yield maps or whatever you want. To, it, it's only really as good as a, as a person who is implementing it. Mm -hmm. So I think a uh, refractometer would be a tool that, that we learn to use. Uh, when I say the, the word silver bullet, everybody wants that really quick cure and they don't want to feel much pain. Um, I found out that sometimes you got to feel a lot of pain to go out and really understand what's going on in that crop. So I feel like a refractometer is a tool that would be much like any other tool you use on your farm. It, it should be well worn. And you go out there and, you, and you're learning what's happening on your farm on a daily basis. If you get a a cloudy morning or something, you can go out and check your right. bricks and then go back at noon and check it. If the sun's come out really bright, go back at noon and find out what's going on. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a barometer and you constantly look at it and you, you start saying, okay, this cloudy day, three cloudy days in a row has really affected my crop because my bricks level has went down four points. That's a barometer you can say, okay, here's what's happening. How do I remediate that? And if it's early enough in the season, you might be able to do a foliar that would bring that bricks up even in the, the, the absence of photosynthesis. Uh, you might be able to put some technology through a pivot on a, that after three cloudy days if you're going to have to, to irrigate. That may help stimulate that plant and bring some of that back. That's... 
you know, that's things that we really need to be conscious of and looking at.